We're going to look at blood and in this video particularly we want to consider the plasma. So if we think about blood, as you know in blood there are cells and there is plasma. So blood contains the cells and plasma. The cells are going to be the red cells and the white cells, the erythrocytes and the leukocytes. But today, on this video, we want to think about the plasma that it is floating in. Now, if you take a sample of blood, anticoagulate it and centrifuge that blood sample, then you're going to end up with something like this. You'll have your test tube there and the red cells will settle out on the bottom after the samples have been centrifuged. And the plasma will be a straw coloured liquid on top. And normally there might be about 45% red cells and 55% plasma. But then if you look closely, you can often see that there's a very small strip of white cells in between the two layers. And these are 1% or less of the, the volume. The amount of blood that is red cells, we term that the hematocrit, the proportion of the blood that is red cells. But today we want to look particularly at the plasma. And the plasma contains a solvent. And in plasma, of course, the solvent is going to be water. And if we just take the plasma without the cells, then about 91.5% of the plasma is going to be water. That is the solvent. And then the other part is going to be the solutes. So the solutes are the materials dissolved in the solvent that is in the water. So we want to think about these solutes, the components of the plasma. And the first one we can mention are proteins. In the plasma, there are plasma proteins. Proteins are the big molecules. So, for example, we have albumin. Now, albumin is the most common, most ubiquitous protein in the plasma. And it's a large protein, a large molecular weight, so it's very osmotic. It generates osmotic pressure. And the proportion of the osmotic pressure generated by the plasma proteins is referred to as the oncotic pressure. So albumin is generating a lot of this osmotic suction potential in the plasma, which is very important for the reabsorption of tissue fluids at the venous end of the capillary and to prevent edema. So if someone doesn't have enough albumin, they can become uh, edematous. Then there's globulins. Proteins which are globular in nature. Now, the globulins, like the albumin, some are made in the liver. All the albumin is made in the liver. Some of the globulins are made in the liver. But other components of the globulins, the immunoglobulins, are actually made by the white cells, the lymphocytes, because the globulins or the immunoglobulin component of the globulins are the immune proteins, giving the body specific acquired immunity. And another protein we could mention is fibrinogen. Now fibrinogen is the clotting protein. Under the right circumstances, fibrinogen, which of course is soluble in the plasma, 
will be converted to fibrin, which is insoluble and will form long, sticky strands to which, to which red cells and white cells will adhere, forming a clot. So the plasma contains proteins. It also contains electrolytes. Now the electrolytes are ions. They are atoms with a charge. And these are very important because we need the correct distribution of electrolytes on both sides of the cell membrane in excitable cells. And the volume of the electrolytes has to be finely regulated. It needs to be homeostatically controlled so we don't have too much or not enough of a particular electrolyte. And the common ones are sodium, which is Na+, chlorine, Cl-, potassium, K+, calcium with two pluses, magnesium with two pluses. So these are present as ions in solution in the plasma. So electrolytes are going to be found in the plasma. So we've got proteins in the plasma, we've got electrolytes in the plasma. We've also got nutrients. There's going to be lots of nutrients in the plasma. So the nutrients are going to be absorbed from the gut. They're going to travel in the blood to the tissues where they are required. So there's going to be the breakdown products of protein metabolism or protein digestion, for example. And the breakdown products of protein digestion, you probably know that one. What are proteins broken down to in the GI tract? Well, of course, it's amino acids. They're broken down to amino acids. And of course, it's very important that there is glucose in the blood. Now, various monosaccharide sugars are absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract into the blood. But the only one you're going to find in the blood is glucose. And this is because any other monosaccharides that are present in the diet are going to be absorbed into the gut, go directly to the liver in the hepatic portal vein. And the first time that blood passes through the liver, the liver will convert any other sugars present into its preferred sugar, which is glucose. So when we talk about blood sugar, we're always talking about blood glucose levels. Other nutrients are going to be minerals. So minerals are important. These are inorganic, simple compounds. You might think of iodine, for example. Which gland needs iodine in order to function? Well, you might remember that the thyroid gland needs iodine in order to make thyroid hormone. Other soluble nutrients in the blood are going to be vitamins. The vitamins A, D, E and K are the fat-soluble vitamins. And in the plasma we're going to find water-soluble vitamins, vitamins B, 1 to 11 and vitamin C. To move over here a bit. Also, in the plasma, we're going to find waste products. So, for example, metabolizing cells are going to produce waste nitrogen and they're going to excrete that into the blood. But the waste nitrogen will be very toxic because it combines with water in the plasma to form ammonia, which is a remarkably alkaline and a remarkably toxic chemical. So we don't want ammonia circulating around in the blood. It would poison us and cause all sorts of brain problems. So what happens is the liver converts the nitrogen waste product into urea. And urea is highly soluble. It's produced by the liver 
and its purpose is to carry nitrogen waste from the liver to the kidneys where it can be excreted. And also the liver is going to break down toxins into metabolites. And the metabolites are breakdown products of larger molecules and the liver makes them more soluble. Again, so they can be readily excreted in the urine. And the only way the plasma, the only way the waste products are going to get from the liver or the cells, wherever the waste product is generated, to the kidneys, if it's the kidneys that are going to excrete them, if it's a compound that is renally excreted, the only way it's going to get there is by being transported by the blood in the plasma. So, waste products. Now, the plasma also contains the endocrine hormones. A hormone is a chemical messenger. It's produced by an endocrine gland. It's carried in the blood from the endocrine gland to its target tissue. And, of course, there are many of these. You might think of insulin produced in the beta cells of the pancreatic islets. You might think of glucagon produced in the alpha cells of the pancreatic islets. Thyroid hormone produced by the thyroid gland. All the hormones are the chemical messengers going to be transported in the plasma around the body. And also there's going to be gases. So some gases are transported in the plasma. Now, there is going to be some oxygen in the plasma. Maybe 1% of the oxygen that's carried in the blood is transported in solution in the plasma. 98.5% of it, or 99% almost, is actually transported in association with the haemoglobin in the erythrocytes, in the red cells, in the form of oxyhemoglobin. But a small amount will be transmitted by the oxygen in the blood. And also there's going to be some carbon dioxide in solution in the blood. And some bicarbonate ions and small amounts of carbonic acid as well. The oxygen of course is going from the lungs to the tissues. The carbon dioxide is being carried from the tissues back to the lungs. And actually some of the carbon dioxide is, is carried in the red cells as well as being carried in the plasma. And of course the plasma is also going to contain quite a lot of nitrogen, but that's normally at equilibrium, so it's not too much of a problem. Unless of course you take up deep sea diving, and nitrogen can be the cause, or is the cause of decompression sickness, what divers call the bends. And I think the last thing I'll talk about are the lipoproteins. Lipoproteins. Now lipo means lipid, and protein of course is, is protein. Now fats cannot dissolve directly in the plasma, so they need to be carried by carrier molecules. So, for example, from the gut, the fats are going to be absorbed into the lymphatic system in the form of chylomicrons. These are going to go through the lymphatic system and enter the venous circulation from the lymphatic system and circulate as chylomicrons. Proteins packaging up fatty molecules for transport in the blood. And then, of course, there are the cholesterol molecules. So you might have heard of HDL and LDL. HDL is high density lipoprotein. High density lipoprotein, or HDL. And this is sometimes called H for helpful cholesterol, or H for healthy cholesterol. 
because the HDL will help to transport fatty material from the blood into the liver where it can be biochemically processed. So high levels of HDL are going to be healthy. Low levels of HDL are going to be atherogenic. That can lead to atherosclerosis. And the LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. And this is normally considered to be the bad form of cholesterol because this takes fatty material from the liver where it is stored and deposits it in the blood therefore it increases the amount of fatty material in the blood which can lead to the furring up of arteries in this process of atherosclerosis. So high levels of low density lipoprotein will be atherogenic. They can lead to atheroma. So ideally we want to have quite high levels of HDL and quite low levels of LDL. So that's just a quick tour of the plasma. We've considered the fact that the blood is divided into the plasma and the cells. The plasma is the solvent, is the water. The solutes, there are proteins, electrolytes, nutrients, lipoproteins, waste products, hormones, gases, all being carried around the body in this great circulatory system, which is the blood.